Hey, what's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about what team I think Jamie Elliott should sign with. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So I'm sure most of you guys know there's been a lot of rumors now that Jamie Elliott is actually going to be on the move to the um in the offseason. First of all, it seemed like it was going to be Melbourne was going to be the team of his choice, and I was a little bit confused about that because I thought it would have had to be a pretty good paycheck for you to want to leave Collingwood to go to Melbourne, and I, su I suppose, you know, looking at that, I don't think I would have done it, I don't know if he would have or not, but I didn't really hear much about that recently until, now there's actually been some news that it looks like Hawthorne have joined the race to get Jamie Elliott to the team, and I wouldn't be surprised if a couple other teams do start to join, for example, Essendon are going to have a lot of cap, because I do genuinely believe they're going to trade Joe Danaher to um, the... Sydney Football Club in the offseason, so I think the Essendon are going to actually have quite a bit of cap, so who knows, they might actually go after Jamie Elliott, but there's going to be so many teams that need a key forward in the offseason, Collingwood I think need a key forward, Hawthorne need a key forward, and if Essendon get rid of Joe Danaher, I think they're also going to need a key forward, so yeah, it's going to be extremely interesting to see how that goes as well, so I don't know if maybe they'd go for Jamie Elliott or not, but yeah, Hawthorne actually joined the race, which kind of surprised me a little bit because I genuinely think Hawthorne needs to target a key forward. What I'm thinking of is Hawthorne actually have locked and loaded a contract um, slash trade offer slash negotiation for Jonathan Patton at the GWS Football Club. So, yeah, I do think that is probably the case and probably what's going to happen. I think Hawthorne might get a trade done there. And then they might potentially sign Jamie Elliott in the offseason, but... Yeah, if I was Jamie Elliott, right now I'd be looking at either Collingwood or Hawthorne. I don't think I'd be looking at Melbourne because Melbourne in a, are in a very sticky situation that I don't know if they're going to be able to get themselves out of or not. I mean, it's pretty bad. They finished in the bottom four and obviously their picks are probably going to be pushed back. One, due to, you know, uh, the AFL most likely giving Gold Coast a priority pick, which kind of stuffs Melbourne up if you think about it a little bit. Um... And then, yeah, they're going to try and get Jamie Elliott and to bring to their team. I think it would be a really, really good get if you were a Melbourne fan. They desperately need a small forward. You could also say they desperately need a key forward as well, but I don't think they need a key forward as much as the other couple teams, but they desperately need a small forward. I mean, their best small forward was probably like Jeff Garlett or something like that, and that's obviously not the best thing. And yeah, they, I don't even know, did they even, did they delist him? I can't even remember, but yeah, I think getting Jamie Elliott is a top priority. Maybe not the type of small forward they need. I'd say they need a pressure forward or so, but Jamie Elliott is still a small forward that they could potentially use. So yeah, I think that would definitely be a pickup, but I just can't see Jamie Elliott even bothering to look at Melbourne. The, the thing is, Melbourne might offer you a little bit more money than what Hawthorne and Collingwood do, but Hawthorne and Collingwood are obviously much richer clubs, and they're more popular, more successful. You're most likely going to win a premiership or something with them before you do with Melbourne. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's obviously a, a, very situ a very sticky situation for Melbourne, and I think they desperately need to try and get Jamie Elliott, whether that means them, you know, overpaying or whatnot. So, yeah, it's definitely going to be really interesting to see what Melbourne do. But then let's look at the Hawthorne side of things for now. Then you got, they're obviously going to get Jonathan Patton most likely. They're probably going to get another couple plays here and there. And yeah, Jamie Elliott, they definitely need to try and get, I'd say. Because yeah, I think once Tom Mitchell comes back from his injury, then the only thing they really lack is potentially a key forward. And you get Jonathan Patton in, who you obviously worry about his key, his um, injuries as well. So you might want to get another key forward just in case. But then you get Jamie Elliott, and then that adds to, like, you know, Luke Bruce and Paul Popolo. And even though Paul Popolo is really out of, you know, seems like he's out of steam and he's been pretty bad recently, I think that that can, you know, really fill. And then you got three really good um, small forwards that are uh, decent at putting pressure on and they can kick their own goals and create opportunities for themselves and for their teammates. It would be a really good get for the Hawthorne Football Club. And to be honest, I think if I was Jamie Elliott, I probably would stay at Collingwood, but I just don't think Collingwood are going to be able to get it done. Think about it. They have to re-sign Jordan DeGoey and um, Brody Grundy in the next offseason and that's about, I'd say, Brody Grundy is going to be demanding at least 1.4 million, I'd say. 
Jordan Digo is probably going to be about 900k. I reckon they're looking at about 2.3 to 2.5 million dollars for both of those player signatures. And there's going to be a couple other players here and there. Like, they still got that Dame Beams contract, which is not looking the best due to his mental health and all that stuff. How are they going to keep Jamie Elliott? Because Melbourne are off, going to offer him so much money. He's probably going to be like 600k most likely. Hawthorne are going to be a pretty similar thing. There is no way, I don't think, that Collingwood are going to be able to sign him on 600k and then going to sign, you know, Brody Grundy on like 1.4 million the next year and then Jordan Ngoi on like 900 to, you know, 800,000 the um, same year next year. So, wow, it's going to be extremely hard for Collingwood and I don't know, I don't think they're going to be able to get his signature. So, I think it's either going to be Hawthorne or Melbourne. As I said, if I was him, I would probably stay with Collingwood and but I don't think that's going to be able to happen unless Collingwood decide to make some moves or Dane Beams comes out of nowhere and decides to retire. That is probably the only case scenario that he's probably going to be able to stay at Collingwood or somehow there was a blockbuster Brody Grundy trade to Adelaide um, before he potentially leaves, which I doubt would happen. And then, as I said, you got the Hawthorne scenario where Hawthorne got some cap. They do have cap. They are looking at a couple of players, as I said. They're looking at... You're pretty much going to bring in... They have their pick this year. Um, I'm pretty sure. Actually, I don't know. Actually, I don't think they do have their pick this year. I'm not too sure. But they're most likely going to bring in Jonathan Patton from GWS. Um, there was a rumor Sam Frost from Melbourne. Jamie Elliott. And you bring in Tom Mitchell. They, those are some pretty big ends. And that could be on the road to them making finals, if you think about it. And their midfield got beaten a couple times this year. Warple was really able to step up, but you pretty much fill that void now with Tom Mitchell. That's insane. And then you pretty much bring in a key forward, which is your most desperate thing. Although Jonathan Patton's injured, I think that's going to be the only thing that Hawthorne are going to worry about is a key forward. And they could potentially look to get a key forward from a different club. Who knows? Um, Carl Moore from Richmond will most likely uh, either get delisted or be... Um, in trade negotiations due to him not being able to find a spot on the AFL team, but he could seek opportunity elsewhere on a team that would value him, such as Gold Coast or Hawthorne, who desperately need a key forward. And I mean, he can, Callum Moore can move around, so it wouldn't be a bad get if you were a Hawthorne fan and if you were the Hawthorne team. So yeah, I think if I was Hawthorne as well, I'd probably bring in Jonathan Patton and bring in Callum Moore as the plan B. Callum Moore can act, he's actually pretty versatile, which I wouldn't say Jonathan Patton really is. So, yeah, obviously Callum Moore can pretty much bend over is what I'm trying to say. Well, John O'Patton's a bit of a bigger, taller unit. And then you can pretty much surround that key forward or both of the key forwards if they both get a game in the 22, which they might. And then you surround that with Jamie Elliott, potentially, Paul Pawapolo, and Luke Bruce. So, it could be a massive thing. And if I was Jamie Elliott, I think I would rather go to Hawthorne than Melbourne, but I don't know if there's really any wrong decisions here because Melbourne are looking at Langdon as well from Freo, and there's going to be a couple other players here and there they could potentially look at, and who knows, if they fix up a couple of things, especially their ball movement in the midfield, like, wow, that that is pretty bad. If Melbourne can fix up a couple of things on their team, they could potentially be, you know, looking at maybe a comeback to finals, but I don't know if it would be that easy. They desperately need McDonald to be healthy, or they could try and get another key forward in free agency. Maybe that would be like Callum Moore, but Callum Moore's like 22 years old now, and he hasn't played that many games, so he's more of a project player that I feel like would be better suited to like Gold Coast or something, rather than Hawthorne or Melbourne, so I don't know about that one, but they could always take the chance if maybe they see something in him. I don't know about keeping Frost. I know Frost is linked to Hawthorne, there's going to be a couple other players here and there that potentially might want to come to Melbourne. If I was Melbourne, I would I would make a play for Ed Langdon and Brad Hill, who were both at um, Frio. But it's rumored that Brad Hill is obviously going to go to St. Kilda. And then there's Stephen Hill, who might be going to Gold Coast. But if I was them, I would try and get all three of them and then get Jamie Allier in free agency and then potentially, um, you know, sweat and hope on the fact that May and Lever are healthy. Then that could be the road back to finals. But yeah, Melbourne just going to, you know, worry about the injuries. Because if Melbourne get like Stephen May and Tom McDonald injured, just two players, they most likely won't even go near finals. And that's what happened pretty much this year. 
even though some might consider Stephen May to be a little bit overrated. I don't really know. It's just a very interesting situation. But I think Jamie Elliott could really help out with Melbourne. And yeah, I just went through it over then. There's no really bad decisions because all three of those clubs, especially Melbourne and Hawthorne, I think Melbourne and Hawthorne are going to be two of the clubs in the free agency slash trade period that are going to be going out and getting so many players slash trading away so many players as well. And then there's going to be Collingwood who are going to have a desperate cap situation. So yeah, I don't know if there's really any wrong de um, decisions with Jamie Alley and who knows, potentially another suitor could come in like St. Kilda where, you know, St. Kilda obviously trying to get Brad Hill who I think Brad Hill might have actually requested a trade to St. Kilda. I'm not too sure, but Saints are going to be looking at a couple players yet again and that, that could be, you know, Brad Hill, um, Jamie Alley. Yeah, who knows? There's going to be a couple players here and there that they could go. But yeah, as I said, there's not many wrong decisions for Jamie Elliott. So he found himself in a pretty good, um, you know, a pretty good scenario. And whatever decision he makes, I don't know if there are really that many wrong ones. But to answer the question, what team I think do I think Jamie Elliott should potentially go to? I think it should be Hawthorne, Melbourne second um case scenario, and then Collingwood and Saints probably third tied because of the cap situation. And yeah, there's probably going to be a couple other Victorian teams here and there. Um, maybe even Brisbane again. I'm pretty sure Brisbane made a play last year. There's going to be a lot of teams that are going to make a couple plays for him. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Brisbane or um, St. Kilda or Essendon or maybe even Gold Coast make a couple plays here and there. And yeah, so I definitely would really like to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts and opinions? Who do you guys think Jamie Elliott should go to? Don't forget to comment that in the comment section down below. Do you guys think... He should stay with Collingwood. Do you think he's going to be able to stay with Collingwood due to the cap situation? Or do you think he should go to either Melbourne or, you know, Hawthorne or maybe a different Victorian team or potentially look to go to Queensland where there's, you know, Brisbane and Gold Coast? So I definitely would really like to know you guys' thoughts and opinions down below. So yeah, also don't forget to um, like the video if you guys enjoyed and subscribe to the channel for all the latest sport and AFL content. Don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel and my IRL slash vlog channels. Also, link uh, in the description down below. So make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.